Number one, figure out your why. Over the past few years, I've helped thousands of people cut the cord here in my YouTube channel and also on my website. And I've identified three key reasons why people cut the cord. The first one is price. Despite what some people say, in most cases, you can still save money with streaming compared to cable. I can tell you that I've saved more than $10,000 over the past decade. The second reason people cut the cord is for more flexibility. And that's because most streaming services do not have long-term commitments or contracts. That way you can sign up for 12 months, six months, or one month only. I also recommend that you rotate your subscriptions. When you get bored with Netflix, cancel it and switch to HBO Max for a bit. That brings me to number three, content. Some of the best content is no longer premiering on broadcast or cable TV. Instead, you're gonna find it on Netflix and other streaming platforms. It's important that you figure out your why because streaming is not the same as your current cable or satellite setup. It will take you some time to adjust, but the savings alone make it worth it for most people. Number two, know your content wants and needs. There are three main types of streaming services. Let's call them cable 2.0, Netflix and more, and free stuff. And here's what you need to know. The further away you get from those cable 2.0 services, the more money you're gonna save over time, and that's what I'd recommend if it works for you. Now let's talk more about the content. First, those cable 2.0 services. I also refer to these as live TV streaming services, and they offer live feeds of cable networks plus on-demand content from those channels. If you watch a lot of sports and opinion news, you may want one of these services. My number one pick for first time streamers is YouTube TV. And that's because it offers the best of cable TV, sports news, entertainment, and your locals. Yeah, it's expensive, but it is cheaper than cable for most people. My budget pick is Sling TV. And if you only watch five or 10 cable channels or so, you may find everything you need with this service. I've got a separate video that breaks down the differences between the live TV services. I'll drop a link below in case you wanna check that one out next. Right now, let's move on to the second category, Netflix and more. I also call these on-demand streaming services, but that's really an oversimplification because some of them do have live elements. But here's the difference. They do not carry the live feeds of the cable networks. For that, you need a cable 2.0 service. I'm gonna use Peacock as an example. This service is owned by NBC Universal, which operates the NBC broadcast network and many cable networks. Peacock offers on-demand content from its family of networks, plus some original shows you won't find elsewhere. While you won't find live feeds of the cable networks, there are some live elements. For example, you can stream Sunday Night Football on Peacock, which also airs on NBC. For the most part, services in the Netflix and more category are cheaper than the cable 2.0 services. Some of them have commercials, others do not, and the plans with ads are typically the most affordable options. Take a look at it this way. You could sign up for a handful of these services for the price of one premium cable 2.0 service. But here's the key. You do not have to sign up for all of these services at once. Limit yourself to maybe three to five subscriptions at a time. And remember my tip from earlier, you can always rotate your subscriptions. Moving on to the free stuff category, and this might surprise you, but there are plenty of free, legal streaming services to discover. The services in this category are typically supported by advertising, so you will get some commercials, but usually less than regular TV. Pluto TV, the Roku channel, and Tubi are three of my favorites. These services are all free, and they offer libraries of movies and TV shows, but some of the content is not as fresh as the paid services. That is the trade-off. But there are exciting changes happening, and I'm going to use Amazon's IMDb TV, for example. This free service is investing heavily in original content. In 2021, it launched Judy Justice, a new court show from Judge Judy Scheinlin. Plus, it's got more original series on the way. Best of all, you do not have to pick one category over the other. A lot of people I know have a live TV cable 2.0 service, as well as free and paid on-demand services from the other categories. Stick with me because I've got a lot more to share. Number three, run the numbers. Now that we've gone over the types of streaming services, let's get into the money and how much you can really save. Let's say your current TV bill is $200 a month. 
First, subtract the cost of internet service. Most of my audience pays $50 to $75 a month for internet service. So why don't we use $75 for this example? That leaves $125 for streaming TV services. If you want a cable 2.0 service with sports, news, and local stations, expect to pay around $70 a month for a base plan. And that'll leave $55 a month in savings compared to cable. Now you could stop here or add a few services from the Netflix and more category. In this example, three services cost about $30. The streaming TV bundle that I've assembled here offers more content and more flexibility, and you are still saving money compared to cable. So let me give you the bottom line. If you can live without one of those cable 2.0 services, what are you waiting for? Cut the cord already? It is definitely worth it for you. But if you rely on cable channels, if those are must-haves for you, take a little more time and run the numbers. Number four, explore new internet options. A lot of people get internet service from the same company that provides TV. But what you can do is call them up and cancel the TV portion of your bill and keep internet only service. If you call up your existing provider and you don't like the price quote for internet only service, you may have other options. For example, T-Mobile and Verizon are expanding 5G home internet service. T-Mobile home internet is $50 a month as of this recording, and that price includes the Wi-Fi gateway that you need to stream. And even if these new options are not available in your area yet, call up your existing provider and ask for the retention department. Then politely ask for a lower price on an internet-only plan. Remember, most of my viewers pay $50 to $75 a month for internet. And while we're talking about internet service, make sure that your internet plan can handle the demands of streaming. Look for an internet plan with download speeds of at least 100 megabits per second. 200 is even better, especially if multiple people in your house connect to Wi-Fi. Now you can get by with lower speeds, like 50 megabits per second, but service may not be as reliable. We've made it to number five. Keep your setup simple. I'm looking out for your money in this section because there are a lot of people online who try to sell you equipment that you just don't need to cut the cord. In fact, you probably already got everything you need to get started. This is a basic streaming TV setup. It includes three things, a TV set, a streaming device, and an internet connection. That's it. And if you've got a smart TV, you don't technically need a streaming device. For example, I'm using a Samsung smart TV. You can see here that popular streaming apps are pre-installed and others are available to download. If all your favorite apps are available from your smart TV, no need to rush out and get a streaming device. But the problem many people run into is that some apps are not available for download from the Samsung Smart TV interface. And I've had a similar experience when I owned an LG Smart TV. And in this case, the solution is to buy a streaming device. And I recommend Roku devices because they're inexpensive and easy to use. At the time of this recording, the Roku Express 4K Plus is a top seller. Hooking it up to your TV set is simple. Once installed, you can access your favorite apps from the Roku channel store, including the free Roku channel. I recommend Roku's in part for the large icons that make it really easy to navigate. The remote is also easy to master. Take a look at the Roku remote side by side with the Samsung TV remote. Now come on, which one would you rather use? There's a fourth piece of equipment for cord cutters. It's optional, but I highly recommend it. I'm talking about an antenna for your local broadcast stations. I use a Mohu Leaf indoor antenna since I live in a city and I'm close to broadcast towers. But depending on where you live, an outdoor antenna may be best. Check out the Antenna Man YouTube channel to learn more about your options. Here on YouTube, he's the go-to antenna expert. And number six, get the timing right. This is a short but very important part of the process, so let's dive right in. If you've got a cable or satellite package, check your latest bill to see if you're in a contract. And if you are, now may not be the time to cut the cord. But you've got another option, and this has worked for a lot of people. Call up customer service and see if they'll let you out of the contract without paying an early termination fee. I've found that if you drop TV but keep internet service with the same provider, they are more likely to work with you. Don't have a contract? Well, you can cancel your existing pay TV subscription at any time. But don't rush into cutting the cord just yet. Instead, 
Try out streaming services before you cancel cable or satellite service. Most of the cable 2.0 live TV services have free trials that let you test them out for a week or so before your build. And if you don't like one service, move on to another until you find the best fit. And once you cut the cord and start paying for streaming services, you should know that billing is not prorated. If you rotate your subscriptions, keep track of your billing dates, I created a free streaming TV spending tracker that you can use, but you can also just set cancellation reminders on your calendar. That works too. Number seven, remain flexible and open to savings. Up until now, this video has focused on the process of cutting the cord, the things you need to know before you start streaming. So by now, you should be able to answer these questions. Why am I cutting the cord? What type of content and services do I need? How much will it cost? Do I have the right internet provider? Do I have the right equipment? And when is the best time to cut the cord? If you've decided that cutting the cord is right for you, manage your expectations. Because if you go into this process trying to replicate cable, every channel, every feature, you may be setting yourself up for disappointment. Just know going into it, there is a learning curve and it will take time to adjust. Remember the picture that I shared at the top of this video? 10 years ago, I had an indoor antenna and a Netflix subscription. That's how I started, but now I stream more than a dozen services. No, I don't subscribe to them all at once. As I've mentioned in this video, I rotate my subscriptions to save money. Here's how that looks. I subscribe to a cable 2.0 service for about six months out of the year, plus a couple of my favorite on-demand services from the Netflix and more category. And the other six months out of the year, I pay only for the services in the Netflix and more category. And that's probably my favorite savings tip, but I've got a lot more for you in my video on how to stream everything you want and still save money compared to cable.